Welcome to Pro Practice, your guide to refine, enliven, and illuminate the piano repertoire. I'm Josh Wright, and today's episode will be Chopin Ballade Number no. 1 in G minor, Opus 23. Pro Practice is designed to make you as efficient as possible at practice. Today's lesson will go over technique, musicality, interpretations, as well as exercises to help you in each of those areas. Let's go ahead and get started. In this lesson, I doubt I'll be able to get all of my thoughts out because I just have so many ideas about this piece. It's my favorite piece ever written, um, and I've played it for many years. So I'm gonna, just gonna take you through some of the thoughts that my teachers have taught me, as well as some things that I've come up with over years of practice. Starting from the beginning, we see Largo, Forte, and Pesante. Pesante meaning heavy, Largo meaning very slow, Forte, obviously, loud. And the biggest thing that I hear so many people do is they miscount this. So let's go through and just count it very basically. One and two and three and four and 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 a one and a two One and two and three and four and one. Okay? And then you have to actually, let me keep counting. One and two and three and four and moderato. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. Okay? Now, that was pretty basic. Didn't have a whole lot of contrast in there, but I wanted to start with that. Because what I want to go over is I want to go over how we can then bend it from there. Because Chopin uses a lot of rubato. Uh, rubato meaning kind of to steal, rob uh, of time, and then you have to give it back. There's a great quote from Heinrich Neuhaus' books, Heinrich Neuhaus's book called The Art of Piano Playing, which says that pianists are never thieves. They, if they steal something, they give it back, or something to that extent is what he's getting at. So. If we want to push forward a little bit, we have to gradually do it. We can't suddenly push forward and suddenly change the time uh, values. I see a lot of students do that. So let me give you an example of how we could do this. Now start a little softer. Push a little bit. And then give back the time. Resolve. Let me also give you a little idea about the pedaling. I feel like the most important part of a concert is the first piece. Similarly, the most important part of a piece is the first line. If you set it up on a sour note, the audience, no matter how brilliant the end is, they're always going to have kind of that taste. So you want to have a very nice, um, beautiful first line. This is a very subjective piece, by the way. If you want to change something, I say, I mean, my way is not the right way. It's simply one way. Okay, so one thing I do and that pedal is down to kind of open up the strings and then I gradually, very slowly let it off so it's off by this C okay, now I put it back down for the A flat back off and then back off okay, so it's down for each of those figures and each of those figures you have to feel the intensity grow get to the top even though the first one you don't want to do this and then start so soft in order to make a crescendo you have to make it still be pesante and big but you have to have the feeling of the intensity getting bigger so when you actually get to the top this makes that makes total sense okay and one thing you can do right here to help you play that f sharp soft but make sure that you actually play it that it's not a ghost note is kind of Put, put your finger in this way and then pull back slightly, like that. So stroke outwards, okay? And then... I like to go to the triplet there. So go to the triplet. And 
that last triplet, I slow down a little bit because I'm coming to the end of an idea. Okay, now, this is so interesting, this first part. I had a teacher one time say, this is kind of like the storyteller setting up the story, and then this is actually where the story starts. Okay, so, because this is so interesting. A flat major, well, what chord is that? That's the Neapolitan, or the flat two, of the key we're actually in, which is G minor. So if you can think how weird this is. So Chopin, what I'm getting at is Chopin starting out an op on an obscure note. So even though it's Largo and Pizzante, you still do have to kind of have a feeling of mystery, and especially when you get to here. Some people do this, they play it with the first note of the roll. Other people kind of play it somewhere in between, like, like that, or, or, let's see, they play it together with the last note. It's up to you. Again, Chopin was such a flexible person. We hear differing things from his different students. One student would play it this way and he'd want it this way. The other student, would he'd want it a different way. And then he'd change his mind. And uh, I've, I've heard stories about his compositional process as being the same thing. He will write one way and then he would stress and say, no, it's not right, only to end up two weeks later back at his original, uh, original score. I, I mean, you just hear all sorts of kind of inward battles. He's a flexible composer, so each time you play this, you can play it a little differently. You can have that improvisational style in Chopin. Okay, moving on. This moderato, I think, is played better. Thank you so much for watching. As with all pro practice videos, the first section is free. If you'd like to view the rest of this video, or if you're interested in learning more about pro practice, just click on the link on this screen or on the link in the comments section below. Thank you for your support of ProPractice.